So today I'm doing kind of an unexpected perfume review because the perfume I'm going to review today, I didn't order. I, I got this perfume, Spark, by Liz Claiborne by accident. I did not, I meant to order, well, I did order. I did order Youth Do by Estee Lauder, which came out in 1953. What I got was this little bottle uh, called Spark by Liz Claiborne, which came out in, uh, in 2003. Usually, getting the wrong item would not be ideal, it might cause some problems, but when I decided to smell this perfume, I was actually quite pleased. This is a perfume that I quite like. Uh, unexpectedly, I quite like it. So I've decided to do a, a review about it, even though I meant to get used to a completely different perfume. Granted, they are similar. They are kind of those similar spicy, kind of old, old school woman's perfumes. But let's first take a look at the bottle. You can see this is a very small bottle. I have very large hands, but this is still a very small bottle. I think this is 0.18 ounces uh, of perfume, so really not that large. Uh, and I wondered if, if this was a sample or a travel spray of some kind, but it seems that this is the typical size for uh, this perfume uh, for women. Now, there is a spark for men, and that seems to come in a variety of sizes, some up to uh, 3.4 ounces. So it is curious to me why mainly this particular bottle and size are available. I don't, I don't think this perfume, I don't know if it's still being produced or not. Uh, it's interestingly a bit, a bit hard to find the female version of this perfume while Spark for Men is much more popular. So the cap is just kind of basic plastic, not not exactly a great color, not exactly a great, uh, I mean, just kind of some cheap plastic. This is glass, so a slightly shaped flagon or whatever it is. So I'll put some on my wrist. And it has kind of a dark woody color. In general, this is a very... I would say it reminds me of, of uh, brandy. Like a fresh... You, a fresh bottle of brandy. A high quality brandy. Not to say that it's overly alcoholic smelling. Uh, even though when you first put it on, you do detect those alcohol notes. The main notes for this perfume are cinnamon, cedar, caramel, musk, rose, and orchid. So, unfortunately, this list doesn't say which are the top notes, middle or base notes. Just kind of throws them all together. So, but, but I would say right off the bat, Right off the bat, the, the, the caramel, there is a sweetness. Now, not gourmand. Gourmand uh, fragrances, uh, the word gourmand just is French for foodie, basically. Something relating to food or something that smells good and sweet or, you know, something like that, like sugar or vanilla or chocolate or something like that. I wouldn't say that this is that because I can't stand those fragrances. They make me want to jump out of the window. But this does have a sweetness that is similar to caramel, but not overly sweet. It's it's a deep, rich, almost dark sweetness. And it's mixed with mainly, I guess, the cedar. The woody notes are quite strong in this perfume. Yeah, kind of a, it's like the the caramel notes and the woody notes are 
at odds, kind of battling it out. And I wouldn't say that the rose or the orchid, I wouldn't say that the floral notes are prominent much at all. No. No, I would say mainly those rich notes kind of overpower any semblance of roses or orchids. And I do like this perfume. I was I was surprised at how much I liked it when I when I first uh, gave it a whiff, and it I well now I have gotten used to at last. Uh, I haven't reviewed it yet, but it is somewhat similar to Spark by Liz Claiborne, and the main thing that is similar between them is that rich, almost leathery kind of spiciness, lots of spiciness. I would say Youth Dew is spicier uh, and more more traditional. This is came out in 2003, so it's going to have a bit of a newer kind of feel and profile, which I imagine is why it's it has that sweetness, because older perfumes in general don't have that level of sweetness. And it's interesting to smell because the notes are kind of all over the place. There is a constant warmth from this perfume. And the cinnamon notes, I don't really detect too much. There is, uh, I would say a general spiciness, not just cinnamon. Kind of you throw in some cloves maybe, some nutmeg, a dash of cinnamon, but not all cinnamon. It's not like uh, one of those hot red candies you would get on Halloween. Instead, this is, I wouldn't say it's subtle because it's not. Like I said, it's like a very well-made brandy or a similar drink like rum, mainly brandy. I think I would compare it most to brandy, something that has been aged for a while or scotch, maybe something that has uh, been aged in an oak barrel, kind of gotten a, a bit of spiciness, some oakiness. And the sweetness does go away relatively soon, and the, that sweetness of that caramel note becomes more mellow. I don't know, maybe like you cooked or smoked the caramel so it kind of mellows out and becomes a bit more musky. This is not an extremely musky perfume. It doesn't have any civet. It doesn't have... Uh, any ambroxan, it doesn't have any very pungent uh, musky notes, just more of a general light musk. Uh, interestingly, the rose note seems to have made an appearance after, I don't know, a few minutes, so... Yeah, it's very, very delicate, but there is a whiff, uh, a semblance of, of the rose note. I suppose it appears the longer you wear it. And I would say that uh, this is a relatively strong perfume, so definitely don't drench yourself in it. Uh, you might get a headache, but, and also it would probably fill up the room you're in, probably irritate some people. But uh, if you put the right amount on, it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, I think in the right amounts, this is a very good perfume. And the longevity, well, this is actually one of the, the longer lasting perfumes that I've tried because I used it one day in the morning and even in the evening, walking around, I would still get kind of hints of this uh, perfume in the air. So I would definitely say this, this is a very long lasting perfume, probably around eight hours, uh, if not more, maybe even 10 hours. And of course, if you kept putting it on, you could probably wear this forever. Uh, now, the uh, price is very, very reasonable. Uh, usually, uh, usually around $10, maybe. So I imagine it's so cheap because the, the bottle is so small. Uh, it's practically the size of uh, a sample or a travel spray. So again, I don't know why the, the bottle is so small, at least for the women's uh, perfume. 
Uh, like I said, the men's perfume comes in larger sizes, but uh, overall, uh, I quite like this perfume. A lot of people say it's similar to Obsession by Calvin Klein, and I can see that. There is um, that woodiness, that, that woodiness mixed with a tad of sweetness, which makes it kind of a unique... So, well, actually, yeah, so, if, say, you want Obsession but can't get it for whatever reason, you could always try getting this one. Although I wouldn't, necessarily, nece I wouldn't necessarily say it's any easier to find than Obsession. I, it might even be harder to find, but it is an interesting little thing to have. Because, like I said, I didn't order, order this. I got this uh, by accident and by surprise. So, having it... And it says it's made in New York. You probably can't see it. Made in New York somewhere. But it is an interesting little perfume to have. Um, and it is a, a pleasurable and unexpected surprise for me to get it. Uh, so overall, I like this perfume. Uh, I don't wear it all the time, but it is something fun to experiment with if you want to try something Older. It is, it reminds me of Christmas a little bit, or autumn. It has those kind of cloves and, and spicy notes and with the little bit of sweetness. So it is a, it would be nice for, for winter or around that uh, time of the year. But overall, this is just a, a fun perfume to wear. It could be also good for the evenings or whatever you want. So. Overall, that's pretty much what I have to say about uh, Spark by Liz Claiborne. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like or subscribe or do both. And I usually make videos every Tuesday or Thursday, although sometimes I make them also on Saturday. So stick around for those.